Hello everyone, I'm Jisap Kim, PhD student in University of Michigan. Today, I'm going to talk about nanomechanics reveal resilience in nacre of musk shells and pearls. Nacre is a material that can be found in a pearl, which is one of the most famous jewelry in the world. What's interesting to us is that it has great resilience based on its hierarchical architecture. For example, Institute TM indentation shows nacre's nanomechanical responses in real time that is much more malleable than bulk material. And high-resolution STM on the right even confirms the nanoscale details on the deformation. Under high compression, we see heavy interlocking, which is fully recoverable and reversible until you get failure. Nature combines aragonite and nacre protein to make a superstructure. Here, each tablet is the building block, and it repeats in a periodic order to become a major crystal. Looking at the fracture toughness versus Young's modulus curve, Nacre has fracture toughness well beyond either components and break the traditional rule of the mixture. So this can inspire future spur materials such as Alumina PMMA. Using this periodic design, Nacre achieves superior toughness and strength. So, how does nature achieve this design? Let's look at this organic beaded pearl, which is one of the most iconic examples in the, in the nature. Zooming on the cross-section, irregular cavities are surrounded by ball aragonite and followed by nacre growth. Initially, aragonite grows onto the organic seed as ferrolite, and at termination, Small particles branch out from calcification center with a fiber assembly to form a larger crystal. After spherulite, large bulk aragonite is formed, and at appropriate physiological condition, musk shell deposit nacre protein onto the bulk. Since the protein interrupts the bulk growth, the bulk aragonite is mixed with a local formation of nacre until the continuous nacre protein is formed. And over time, the initial nacre become more ordered structure. So, in this nacre growth, first few layers are very disordered with great variation in their thickness. However, when they transition to late nacre, the thickness become more uniform and the system is very periodic. So, how does it achieve this long-range order? As we saw previously, Tablet's thickness is greatly fluctuated in early nacre. That's reflected in Fourier transform. Here, its angular broadening represents its angular ranges that interfaces its span. As we go to mid and late nacre, the tablets become more uniform in their thickness and in their smoothness. So, its angular broadening of Fourier transform is reduced below 10 degrees. And we can even quantify how good of crystal this is if we look at pair correlation of nacre. It measures the probability of finding tablets at a distance of R away from reference 1. If every pig has the same width, the system is long-range order, and that's how crystal's pair correlation looks like, such as in atomic lattice. One of the key features here is that the peaks are broadening as we're looking at correlations between first nearest neighbor, second nearest neighbor, and third nearest neighbor, and etc. This type of behavior is accumulative disorder that describes so-called part crystalline material. So if we look at the plot of peak orders versus standard deviation in this pair correlation function, these peaks to broaden as we go to each nearest neighbors. So if it lies somewhere between perfect crystal and ideal part crystal, the nacre is grown with accumulative disorder. Secondly, the peaks in late nacre looks sharper than early, which means it has less disorder. So how can these peaks sharpen pro progressively? If we correlate the thickness of nacres with that of next nearest neighbors, we can clearly see that it is uncorrelated. That means if one tablet is thick, the next one tends to be thin. So this anticorrelation allows nacre to achieve long-range order. 
That's how Nacre become a major crystal with accumulated disorder that is not inherent to that's not inherent to real crystal. So based on this hierarchical architecture, Nacre shows great resilience. First, let's look at monolithic aragonite that is create that is geologically created. As I said earlier, aragonite is a principal component of Nacre that occupies 97 weight percent. Using HTM indentation, we see the monolith elastically responds to stress and shows really limited deformation. Once nanocracks are generated, it leads to catastrophic failure very quickly. And that's because stress accumulated here is not sufficiently released. However, if you look at Nacre, the strain contours looks very complex. Uh, that's significantly different from monolith. Since Nacre uses integrated organics both within the tablet and between the tablet, it allows this heavy deformation and preserve the overall architecture even a failure. On a system level, Nacre sustains several fractures before total failure. And surprisingly, after removing the road, the original morphology is partially recovered, showing its amazing malleability. And let's see how strain behaves differently before and after locking. When we compress the specimen at low stress, a strain contours propagates between uh, strain contours propagates within the tablets from left to right. And that's because the sharing of interlamellar membrane prevents longitudinal propagation to neighboring tablets. However, as compression increases at transition, tablets interlocked and strain contours change their structure. They now propagate between the tablets radially. All of this behavior is distinct from normal bulk materials behavior. And to see more detail about nanostructural deformation, we did high resolution STM imaging. Zooming on the interface, it has well-known separations with asperities and organic layer. On the compression, however, these interfaces come into direct contact and smash up against each other and the tablets are completely locked. So it formed a series of temporary mineral bridges. And as shown in the inset, even infrastructure like organic inclusions and nanograins are clearly deformed. However, when you let the pressure off, remarkably, the system returned to near identical state. So just look at the images before indentation and after indentation. They are almost indistinguishable. In fact, we've lifted this experiment dozens of times and we found this full recovery is reversible until it gets failure. And the slope of stress displacement curve also remained unchanged during the repeated cycles. And the nanomechanical response we saw previously can be also quantified by stress displacement curve, as you see here. Although our indentation measures on thin cross-sectional sample, overall trend is consistent with a long history of previous measurement that is primarily about bulk and micro-indentation. What we've learned from this quantification is monolithic aragonite shows highest strengths but and, st and steepest behavior. However, Nacre's aragonite shows the comparable strengths, but it shows three times higher toughness because of its hierarchical architecture. Moreover, it also survives multiple fractures before total failure. As a summary, uh, with indentation using each technique, we not only quantify force and displacement curve in the material, but also we can watch that in real time and how Nacre's structure responds to stress compared to bulk. Also, our result quantifies long range order in biomineral and show that's percrystalline. So lastly, we thank to the Na broader Nacre community for their great research out there. And lastly, I greatly thank my advisor, Professor Lof Hofden and Alden Noah Raura for their great collaborations. Thank you for listening. 
and I appreciate your question.